Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning we are continuing the free agency content and the topic of today's video is the top 10 free agents, in my opinion, for this upcoming free agency. However, before we get into these top 10 free agents, I just want to leave a reminder to like and subscribe to this video. I've been enjoying all the support you've been giving me lately and I hope that we can see that continue because it's a lot of fun. However, without further ado, Let's get right into this ranking. This is going to be players that either have player options or are going to be unrestricted or restricted free agents. Actually, I don't really think there's any restricted guys on here. So unrestric unrestricted free agents are guys with player options, although there actually is a couple of restricted guys in the honorable mentions section. But I guess we'll start it off with those honorable mentions. Uh, there were 18 players that I really considered for this top 10 list, and so obviously I had to cut 8 of them to go from 18 to 10, so there's going to be 8 honorable mentions here. They are Paul Millsap, Evan Fournier, DeAnthony Melton, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Hassan Whiteside, Derek Favors, Montrez Harrell, and Andre Drummond. None of these players quite were quite good enough to where I thought that I could put them in my top 10 free agent list. Oh, I just want to say that these are the top 10 free agents in terms of how good of a player they are right now. I think that DeAnthony De Melton is one of the higher value free agents in this class. I'd probably have him as a top 5 value guy in this draft, but I don't think that he is one of the 10 best players right now. So these are the 10 best players that are free agents this offseason as of right now. So, like I said, those are my honorable mentions, and let's get right into the top 10. At number 10, I have Davis Bertans, who's a shooting specialist that played for the Washington Wizards this past season. It was between him, Paul Millsap, and Evan Fournier for this last spot, and I ended up going with Bertans because I think that his elite skill is better than any of those other two, and with him, it's the shooting he can knock down from like anywhere past half court. He's a very entertaining player to watch for that reason as he's one of the better shooters in the entire NBA. You have to really have a hand in his face all over because he's not afraid to shoot and he's very good at it. So definitely one of the more entertaining guys. On defense, there's some questions. He can't really guard too well uh, either on the perimeter or in the post, but... He's not absolutely awful. He's he's playable out there. So with his shooting abilities on the offensive end, it's able to make up for it. And for that reason, the primary being the shooting, I have Bertans at number 10. At number 9, I have Joe Harris. And I have him above a guy like Bertans and a guy like Evan Fournier because not only is he a great shooter like those two guys, is Harris is probably one of the five best shooters in the entire NBA, but he's also pretty solid on the defensive end of the floor as well. He holds his own there, is a tough defender, really is is pretty good uh, off the bounce as well, as we've seen him develop a pretty solid mid-range game off of a, a shot fake, take a couple of dribbles into the, into the three-point line and take a, a mid-range jumper. He also is solid going to the rim. I was really impressed by him in the playoff series against the Raptors. I really have always underestimated his ability to finish at the rim, I think, as he's pretty solid. He's got a solid like floater game, and he can really finish above rim protectors as well. So that, along with his excellent skill as a shooter, he has a solid like sidestep where he catches shot fake one dribble and take a step to his side and take a shot. He uh, does a great job manufacturing a little bit of space for him so that he can get a better look. He's got that move down pat, and that's the biggest way that he can manufacture a shot for himself off the bounce. He is a solid creator as well, not a guy that you would call a secondary playmaker. He's probably going to be a tertiary player for you in that way, but his ability to space the floor, be a solid defender, and have some viability as a playmaker makes him a, a big 
target in free agency this year. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him get paid as much as $15 million annually from a team like the Brooklyn Nets. Bringing him back, or I would love to see him on the Bucks, but I don't think we're going to have the money to sign him. But I really think that he should be someone the Hawks are looking at as the team with the most cap space. They could use a wing like that, and he would be a better player now than DeAndre Hunter or Kevin Herter, and those guys could learn from him. Cam Reddish as well. I think he could be a great fit there. But in the end, I think he'll probably come back to the Nets as they have said that he is their primary focus in this year's offseason. At number eight, I have a guy that I included in my most overrated free agents this offseason. But while I do think he is being a bit overrated due to the fantastic playoff run he had, I don't think that he's being overrated to a point where he doesn't belong on this list. I still think that he's a top 10 free agent why I have him here at number eight, and that's Goran Dragic. He's a terrific playmaker, really good ball handler, can be a secondary ball handler for a really good team, as we saw this past season. Guy uh, shoots the ball very well from the perimeter, and he's a decent finisher, has a really nice mid range game, has a solid uh, floater move, as well as a uh, nice chemistry in the pick and roll we saw with Bam Adebayo this past year, and those pick and roll ball handlers can be very, very valuable, and that's one of the places where he's best. And we saw the Heat really lacking that in the games where they did not have Goran Dragic in the NBA Finals, as they needed his his pick and roll playmaking. And without that, Bam Adebayo was really limited on the offensive end of the floor. So. His value is certainly there. I just think that the questions about his age and the injury questions, as well as his suspect defense, that was covered up a bit in the playoffs due to the fantastic defenders he had around him and guys like Jay Crowder, Andre Iguodala, Bam Adebayo, and Jimmy Butler. But due to those questions, I don't think that he's better than any of the other guys I have on this list. However, I do think that Dragic is a really good player and will be deserving of a deal in the 10 to $12 million deal annually, if not a one-year deal for about 14 to $16 million. The number seven free agent in this upcoming class, in my opinion, is Mike Conley, who was a point guard for the Utah Jazz. I think it's going to shock a lot of people to see that I have Conley above Dragic on this list, but despite them having going in different directions this past season with Conley having one of the worst seasons of his career and Dragic having a terrific playoff run. I still believe that Conley is a better player. He's a, a better defender, similar in terms of playmaking, not as good of a shooter, but I think that his defensive contributions make all the difference in making him a better player than Dragic, but I do think that that's certainly a conversation you could have. Conley, we saw have some of his best games of the season in the playoffs as he had a game where I think he was in the high 20s and a couple other games where he was in the high teens to low 20s. So he's still a reliable scoring option. Once again, a guy that's really good in the in-between game, uh, between the, the paint finishing stuff and the three-point shot is what I mean when I say that. So like the mid-range where he's taking floaters and pull-up jumpers, stuff like that. I think that he does a great job in that area. It's not an efficient shot, but sometimes it's the right shot, and he is good at knocking it down when that is the case. He's also at least functional from the three-point line. While he's not as good as Dragic in that area, he still shoots the ball pretty well. This is one of his poor shooting seasons, but I believe we'll see him regress back towards the mean and shoot the ball better next season. So for all of those reasons, I have Mike Conley as the seventh best free agent in this upcoming free agency. At number five, at numbers five and six, I have two guys that have, well, I guess this would apply to Conley too, as he has a player option he's likely to accept. But I guess five through seven, three guys with player options that they will likely be accepting. The next guy would be DeMar DeRozan, who I have at number six. DeRozan is a, a bit of a dinosaur. You could call him a raptor, as that was his old team. But his style of play has kind of gone extinct playing along with the dinosaur theme uh, in this current NBA. He thrives in the mid-range, and currently that is not in style, as their emphasis is really on three-point shooting, and we've seen him 
be one of the few perimeter players that really just refuses to take three-point shots. He's not a terrific playmaker, but he's certainly serviceable in terms of that, can be a solid secondary playmaker. And on defense, he's better than people think. People really treat him as a liability, it seems, sometimes when they talk about DeMar DeRozan. And while he's not good, he's close to average, if not right on average. I'd say he's slightly below average in terms of defensive stuff, but he's not terrible. And for that reason, I think that if you're getting him on a deal in the 15 to $18 million annual range, you're getting a pretty solid deal for a guy that can be a, at worst, guy sixth man coming off your bench that can give you buckets at best, a borderline all-star level player who can elevate your team to the next level. I think that he could be a very interesting idea for the Hawks as a guy who could give them another scoring option when Trey Young is on the bench. I think that he could either be a great sixth man option or like a fifth starter for them. I would like him better off the bench so that his minutes are offset with Trey's a little more so that Trey doesn't have the ball being out of his hands too much. But they could also play together as DeMar could create some penetration that could create some open shots for Trey. So I do think that that could be a solid fit right there. Otherwise, a team like the Knicks could overpay for DeMar DeRozan. A team like the Pistons could want to bring him in to be one of their better players if they want to make another run at the playoffs. So if he does decline that player option, I think there will be a market for him, but he's getting paid enough in that player option, and I think that there would still be a market next offseason, so I do think that he will likely opt into that player option. And number five, we have maybe the guy of these last uh, couple that is the most likely to opt out of his player option, and that would be Gordon Hayward, who is a big wing, who is a solid playmaker, who is a good shooter, decent defender. He really is kind of a do-it-all player, jack-of-all-trades for you, as he's really one of the more underrated players in this free agency class. I think people are bashing him too much because of the injuries. I didn't think to include him in my most underrated free agents, but... I think he probably would have been in that area with like, oh, I don't know. I kind of can't remember the players that were on that list all of a sudden. Maybe in the area with like Derek Jones Jr. and Trey Burke as a guy that's being undervalued quite a bit. I think that we could see Hayward get signed to another very uh, lu- lucrative deal Something along the lines of four years, eighty million to four years, ninety-two million dollars. Uh, he could go to a team like Charlotte, where he would immediately become one of the better players on the roster. Especially if they were to draft James Wiseman, that could maybe elevate this Charlotte team to being a playoff team, as he would be a large improvement on the wing over a guy like Miles Bridges. He would have the ball in his hands quite a bit and could be a solid playmaking wing for guys like Devontae Graham and Terry Rozier in the backcourt. He could establish a solid pick and roll game with Wiseman, with Wiseman as a rim runner for him. And I think that he could be a great signing for a team like that. Otherwise, he would have a solid fit with the Hawks as well as a guy who could playmake and be that secondary playmaker for them while also spacing the floor well for Trey Young. That's an addition I would love to see for a lot of teams that are rebuilding. I think he could really start to accelerate some of those rebuilds and would be a player I'd be targeting. Even if I were a winning team, the Heat are likely to have some cap space this year, and he would be a player I would think about. Obviously, they want to conserve that cap space for next offseason, but imagine a lineup of, uh, go. Oh, well, I guess they probably wouldn't be able to bring back Dragic, so like Tyler Hero or Kendrick Nunn at the point guard. Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, Gordon Hayward, and Bam Adebayo. That would be very frightening. So I think that he could be a big candidate for a lot of different teams if he were to opt out of his player option this season. And I would love to see him sign with a rebuilding team and try to make them into a bottom-tier playoff team. The fourth best free agent, in my opinion, is Danilo Gallinari, who we could see in a signing trade as a guy who can really shoot the ball is a solid guy off the dribble as well and can get open looks in the mid-range with some efficiency. 
Not a great playmaker, but he's certainly serviceable. Not a great defender, but he's also not terrible there either. So I think that he, for the reason of his shooting alone, could be very valuable here as a guy who can really just get you buckets. He's great in the mid-range. He's solid finisher. He's got a big enough body that he can get to the rim quite a bit. And we could see him reach like a 20-point-per-game peak if he's in the right situation. I would love to see him go to a team like the Suns where he could be that power forward that they've been missing recently, especially if they draft a point guard. We could see them have a lineup this year of like Ricky Rubio, Devin Booker, Mikhail Bridges, Danilo Gallinari, and uh, DeAndre Ayton with a bench of Cameron Johnson, Kelly Oubre, whoever they draft, so like Killian Hayes or... Kira Lewis, and then like Frank Kaminsky or Dario Saric as a backup big. That could be a very, very fun team and a team that could definitely compete for a playoff spot. Gallinari would come in and be probably the second best player behind Devin Booker, maybe third, depending on how you think DeAndre Ayton is as a player right now. But that would be a great fit for him, and they do have cap space where they could give him like a 15 to $18 million annual deal, which is kind of where I think the market for him will be. Otherwise, he could sign with a team like the Hawks and be another option on the offensive end. However, he does clash a little bit with John Collins as a scoring big, so maybe that could be a direction he wouldn't look to go in. He could sign for the mid-level, which would be a big pay cut, but could also make him more likely to compete for a championship with a team like the Lakers or the Jazz or the Trailblazers. So Danilo will have options. He could also be signed and traded to a team like the Heat or the Raptors or the Bucks if they would be interested. So like I said, Gallinari's going to have options and... I'm excited to see where he ends up because I think that he's a player that could make or break the season for a lot of different teams. The third best free agent in this class, in my opinion, is Fred Van Vliet, the best point guard, really the best guard in general in this class, as the next two guys are both forwards. Van Vliet is a, is a really good playmaker for his teammates. He's a really good defender, shoots the ball at a decent clip. Really, he's going to be a great guy for your culture as we've seen him grow from being an undrafted free agent to really, like, I would almost call him a borderline all-star. I think that he's going to get a big payday, whether it comes from the Raptors or a rebuilding team like the Knicks or the Pistons, I don't yet know, but I think that he will be worth that payday. With the Knicks, I think that he could immediately make them into a playoff contender. Slotting him into the backcourt alongside R.J. Barrett could be a perfect fit, and I would love to see him there with the Pistons. Once again, he could take them and make them an even better team. Maybe a team that could even be competitive in the first round of the playoffs. A starting lineup of Fred Van Vliet, Luke Kennard. I guess the small forward spot would be a bit of a hole for them. But maybe you can draft Devin Vassell there or Isaac Okoro. So Van Vliet, Kennard, Okoro. At the power forward, you have Blake Griffin, and at the center, Christian Wood. That could be a very fun and very exciting team, and I think that Van Vliet could be a piece for them moving forward. Otherwise, he could just go back to the Raptors, where he could be, once again, part of one of the most fun backcourts I've ever watched, the small backcourt of him and Kyle Lowry. Um, space the floor for Pascal Siakam and form one of the best defensive teams in the NBA once again there in Toronto, so... I do think that Fred could be a terrific option for a lot of teams in free agency this year, and I'm excited to see him get paid because of how hard he's had to work to elevate his game to the point that it's currently at. The second best player in this free agency class is Brandon Ingram. Ingram is a pure scorer, shoots the ball well, can get into the lane with ease on defense. He has improvements to make, but he... If he makes those improvements, could be like a top 15, top 20, maybe top 10 player in the NBA. And for that reason, I believe that the New Orleans Pelicans will bring him back on a four-year max, which is the biggest contract that they can give him. His fit with Zion Williamson is still questionable as Williamson was injured for the majority of his rookie year. 
But in the end, I do think it could work out due to Ingram's ability to space the floor and also be a terrific first option when Williamson is off the court. The big question with that team is whether or not they would trade Drew Holiday, but even if they do, Ingram can be that perimeter scoring option that they would be losing in Holiday. He could take over an even larger role there. Last, this last year, we saw him be an all-star, and I think that if he continues on the trajectory he's on, he's got a chance to be an all-NBA type guy in the near future. So I do believe that he'll get the max from the Pelicans, but if he doesn't, a team like Charlotte or Atlanta would love to add him to their current core. Finally, the number one guy in this free agent class, you all know who it is. He's got a player option that he's going to opt out of, and he's going to sign probably a max, whether it's one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, I'm not really sure. There's a lot of different options there for him, but he plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. He's a power forward center. Did you get it yet? It's Anthony Davis. <laughs> uh, this guy is incredible. Uh, defense, he's up there with Giannis Antetokounmpo is one of the best defenders in the NBA. He's great on the back line as a guy who can be a really good rim protector for you, can switch out and guard on the perimeter pretty much two through five. I don't even need to talk about him on offense where he's an absolute menace. He's got a really good post game where he's got some great uh, fade. His fadeaway move is lethal. I know we get angry with him for taking it because we feel like he should be able to dunk all over guys every single possession, but... He seems to hit that fadeaway every time he takes it. He's elite at finishing in the lane. He shoots the ball incredibly well for a big man. We all know Anthony Davis is a top seven guy in the NBA, and obviously he's going to be back with the Lakers on a max contract this upcoming season. That was my list of the top 10 free agents in this upcoming free agent class. Let me know in the comments section down below what you agree with. I'm sure my take of Mike Conley is better than Goran Dragic will receive some flack. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. That's it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon.